fight for our people. That's right. She'll fight for her people. Uh, and as we continue on looking at some 3DS eShop exclusives. Uh, a little got a little off track because Attack of the Friday Monsters needed demanded my time, and I'm glad that we looked at that. But uh, we have, do have some other things to try out, such as Liberation Maiden, uh, a game by Grasshopper manufacturer, good old Suda, um, published by Level Five. Level Five also published Friday Monsters, I believe. They they published a bunch of digital games on the 3DS eShop. Uh, this came out in October of 2012, and I say this is eShop exclusive, but Wikipedia tells me that there was an HD version of this game released for iOS in 2013. I didn't know that. I thought this was always just 3DS, but it, didn't ha it did not have a physical release, I don't believe. So it counts as a digital-only game. We're going to try it out. Tap the screen to liberate. Well, we're not liberating maidens. The maiden is going to liberate, is how it goes. All right. Liberation maiden. Well, we're just going to start the game. You'll get the idea of what this is about. Let's go with normal difficulty. future. The spirits that once protected our beautiful nation have been taken from us. Our country has fallen. My lady, the votes have all been tallied. Shoko Ozora's election bid has been accepted by majority vote. Father. Let's go, Kaboy! Godspeed. I, Shoko Ozora, will fulfill my duty as second president of New Japan! Right. Why aren't the uh, U.S. elections like that? I have to wonder. The liberation front are drawn. The time comes for Shoko to prepare for battle. Having witnessed the enemy's massive conduit spikes and overwhelming offensive with her own eyes, she forces her fears aside and heads into the fray. So, one... Th oh, hold on. Fight for our people. Proceeding with the mission. This is Kira. Autopilot is engaged and you are en route to the old capital. Shall I explain your controls, Madam President? Well, yes, we will. But it should I have something I didn't they didn't mention here that really should be mentioned. Our character here is the daughter of the first president of New Japan who was assassinated, and the people demanded that his daughter be the second president, so they voted her in. So our father president was killed, so we're now the president, because that's how it works, and we got into the mech, and now we're flying to defend the country, and I'm, my controls need to be explained. Very good, ma'am. I'll brief you on the controls during the mission as needed. The autopilot will disengage soon. Oh. 
Incoming directive. The enemy has a battalion of tanks positioned at the airport. Destroy them all. Who's the enemy? I, we don't know, but we gotta destroy their tanks. Hold the reticule over enemies to lock on, then release to attack. Okay, I'm gonna be using the uh, stylus on the touch screen to do that. Your deflector nodes will recharge while not locked on. The deflector nodes around the Liberator act as both your defense and your offense. By firing all of the deflector nodes, you leave yourself open to attack. So please, be wary of your remaining nodes. Always be wary about those nodes. In short, you'll be risking your life without the deflector nodes. Make sure you charge them periodically. Roger that. Proceeding with the mission. Autopilot disengaged. Commence operations. This is what the president does. Evade! Nature is returning to that area of the city. Already, we just we we fired a few nature returning missiles, and look what it's already working. Yes, destroying the enemy structures will purify the land and restore it. We have to free the land from the corrupting influence of the enemy, so nature can take its course. The old capital's airport have been destroyed. Mission complete. We did it. New orders. Yes, already. Find and destroy the three lesser spikes located within the old capital in order to cut off the energy from the greater spike. Of course. I'm sending you their last known positions. Head in the direction of the arrows on your display. So the conduit spikes come in two flavors. Roger. Yes, the conduit spikes, of course. Mission start. You should Hello. Take advantage of the Liberator's strafing ability. I'm issuing the control instructions. Yes, the strafe. They're abominations. What are? What are? The lesser spikes tap into the energy veins to act as conduits of power to the greater spike, hence their name. To destroy the greater spike, you'll have to take out the lesser spikes to cut off its power source. Lesser spikes have two weak points, the cores in the head and their central shafts. You'll need to take out the head for- now the, the one in the central shaft is pretty sensitive. Damaging a lesser spike causes it to rise to the surface to face its attackers head on. Keep up your assault, and when it reveals its underground core, that's your chance to destroy it. Understood. I'll concentrate my fire on the cores. All right. Energy charging. We did it! Oh, the core is exposed. The shaft. We did it. New Japan speaks, Madam President. Please help make this a peaceful country again. Takashi Farmer, 55. That's what we're doing. Two lesser conduit spikes remaining. Please head to the next target. We're doing that. We're gonna. It's gonna be so peaceful by the time we're done. Madam Hello. President, if you can destroy enemies rapidly, you'll build up shield energy. Once you've built up enough, it will be converted into a new deflector node. I love deflector nodes. As, almost as much as I love bringing peace and restoring nature to the land with missiles. There's a lesser spike directly ahead. The enemy has fortified its defenses, so please be careful. I know, I'm blowing them up! I mean, I hope the things I'm blowing up are the defenses, because I, I don't know what they are otherwise. When it's full, you can use the Liberator's energy blade to unleash a powerful attack. Of course, my energy blade. Your blade and cut through the enemy. Let's do that. Uh, draw my blade, and... That's my sword. Kira, those black lines along the ground, what are they? We call them energy veins, Madam President. The pipelines of spirit energy. I see. The lesser conduit spikes were built to tap into the energy in those veins to supply shield power to the greater spikes. If you fire on the energy veins, they should start to glow. And if a lesser spike is burrowed, they'll lead you right to it. That may come in handy. Understood. I don't, I don't, actually, I do not, I do not know what, what we're looking at. What lines? Oh, okay, I kind of see, like, I think I see a line. Purification, 
Japan speaks. I have faith that President Shoko can save us, says Nomoka School Teacher 26. This Hello. That spike has gone dark. Only one left. Two down. Energy charging. Destroy this lesser spike, and you'll bring down the shield around the greater spike. Roger. Target acquired. Madam President, I recommend switching to strafing mode in order to keep it in your sights as you maneuver around it. I have been switching. Another one. It'd be, be kind of hard if, like, you, if you didn't switch between the two. Because if I'm not in strafing mode, I do this. Like, I turn in place. Then I turn on strafing mode, and then I'm like this. Hold on, my sword's up. my sword is up. Swing my sword. I don't swing it, I throw it really. I mean if I throw it, it's really more like a javelin than a than a sword. Enemy missile tracking you. Enemy missile closing in. Oh, the deck love in Tokyo once again says Tetsu. I, I, caught, I didn't see the beginning of that. Tetsuya longs for the day that he can live in Tokyo again. Spikes eliminated. Good. I've confirmed that the greater spikes shields are down. Madam President, please head there at once. Understood. I'm on my way. Destroy it. Destroy the greater conduit spike. Let's do that. I knew the greater spike would be big, but it's huge. Good, good goodness. How am I supposed to bring that thing down? Greater spikes have multiple cores between their head and the ground. Focus on destroying them from the top down. Good enough. Commencing my attack on the greater conduit spike. Very well. I'm switching the liberator to greater spike combat mode. I'm, I'm glad that we have a greater spike combat mode. I was concerned about that. Okay, light flash conduit spike greater mark one. All right, this is this is my battle mode specifically for the great spike. Oh, my sword. Get my sword out. Oh, the lyrics start up. You always love that when it's dramatic and the lyrics start. Oh, the shaft is getting exposed. Even more shaft, the sensitive undershaft. Oh, the sword! Use my sword to finish the shaft. It's not finished yet.
Oh, even more under shaft? How much shaft does this have? I don't know if I can take one this big. It's getting too dangerous. That's the Greater Spike's final core. Finally, the greatest of shafts. So I just need to destroy that? It's not that simple. The core is protected by thick armor. Normal attacks won't penetrate. Well, any advice? We do have the sacrifice drive. Of course, the sacrifice drive. Huh? The Liberator has an attack that can pierce the armor of the Greater Spike's core. But the core is giving off so much energy. If you don't destroy it quickly, your craft won't make it. When I decided to pilot this thing, I knew this might come with the territory. Man. I'm issuing an executive order. We're using the sacrifice drive. All right. Uh, slide across the screen. Hold on. I was trying to... It seemed like I was supposed to do something dramatic with the touch screen. Madam President, please come in. Okay. Do I like slide across it? Energy charge. Like if I'm if I'm looking at sacrifice. Okay, there we go. It activated. I guess I just had to build it up long enough. Its armor. See, I felt that. With, when that appears on the screen, the thing you would do is very dramatically slash across the screen. It seems like it seemed like the thing you would do, but it didn't seem like that was working. Oh, spin, spin, spin. Uh, spin faster. Conduit Spike's signal is gone. Madam President, come on home. Stage is clear. Stage attack mode has been updated. I have 63,000 purities. I'm the purest president. Thanks to Shoko and her liberator, New Japan forces have retaken the former capital of Tokyo. From who? The enemy has a base in Kagoshima on the island of Kyushu. <laughs> Who's the enemy? <laughs> preparing a counteroffensive. Learning of this, Shoko and the battleship Nagata set their course for the island. They'll regret ever setting foot in this country. Proceeding with the mission. Okay, so that's, I guess that's the first mission for Liberation Made. Quite an intense game. Um... A lot of rubbing the stylus all over the screen. While anime happens. Uh, as the president does what the president does, and that is execu issue executive orders to unlock the sacrifice drive so we can turn into a human drill to penetrate the shaft to save the country so nature can return and we get purity points. Uh, let's, let's look at some records. Let's look at the gallery here. We did, we, I, there is some stuff that's unlocked in the gallery. You want to know about some backstory? Like World History 1? Ahem, prologue, 100 years in the future. 
Japan is one of the most beautiful countries in the world, replete with natural splendor and calm weather. Oh, like in Friday Monsters. But Japan is soon annexed as a vassal state to the Dominion, a nature on the warpath that has been steadily conquering the world one country at a time. However, the long-running war waged by the Dominion impoverished his nation, and the war front shrinks bit by bit. Seizing the opportunity, Japan launches into action in order to liberate the nation under Dominion rule. Faced with this crisis, the Japanese government dissolves the parliamentary system. Seeing the need to replace the prime minister who has only limited emergency powers with a president who can act on his own recognizance. And so Yuchihara Ozawa, one of the central figures in Japanese government, begins the armed uprising against the Dominion as the first president of Japan. The resistance builds up his forces and soon poised to retake the country and its military. I, tragically, while addressing the resistance movement in a rousing speech, President Ozawa is felled by an assassin's bullet. It seems that all hope of liberation is lost, but the urging of cabinet members, Yoshishiro's daughter Shoko was elected second president of Japan. The nation of New Japan is born, and the parliamentary battleship Nagata sets out with Shoko alongside the liberator Kamui. And that's, there you go. That you're getting, the, the enemy is the Dominion. Let's look, let's learn some more history. World history too. Japan, 100 years in the future. Alone with worsening condition comes a worsening environment, and the Japanese government enacts large-scale ecological reforms based on the state of industry. The tagline is animism-based natural mechanical engineering. Very catchy tagline. The government raises the guardian spirits, sources of magnetic energy fields whose harmonic resonance helps raise the quality of life for the people. Oh, is that it? All right. Not much information there. But that's 100 years in the future. World History 3. The Dominion. Their radical political philosophy is little more than a front for spreading their own ideals and national interests, leading them to wage war against the entire world. This came about through actions of one individual, the sole ruler of the Dominion knows only as the chairman, whose ambitions border on madness. He leads his nation from one war to the next. The Dominion's might is great with full half of his natural bu national budget devoted to military spending. Meanwhile, the carrot and stick of policies apply to domestic affairs in order to preemptively prevent any public unrest. Such is not the case, however, in their colonies or vassal states. The nation is structured so that the prime minister's office headed by the federal chairman is the central civilian power with the uh, army and navy providing military power however with the expansionist reforms combining the two ma wartime initiatives are the source of much discord the chairman commands absolute loyalty there you go the chairman is the villain commanding that loyalty uh stage one tokyo the former capital of tokyo floats atop the sea for over the past 100 years, many of Tokyo's famous landmarks and buildings have disappeared, and little trace remains of the city from which it served as capital. Capital. Oh no, what about the, the card game? The monster cards? Did that survive? Did, did the monster cards survive? The sinking of Tokyo? Oh no. What about this one? Tap the icon once more to play the movie. Okay, that's cleared stage one in story mode. So that's, this is the intro, okay. All right, that's Liberation Maiden. Uh, fun fact, that anime intro was made by Studio Bones. Uh, rather prolif 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 that, so they made a, They make a lot. They make a lot of anime. Um, okay. Liberation Maiden. Grasshopper made this. Um... It plays okay. I mean, the only issue I had with, with playing it is that I usually, being left-handed, I usually would use the stylus in my left hand. But this is a game where you're controlling the pro the main character with the circle pad on the left side, which means I'm using the stylus in my right hand, which I don't particularly like. Um, but, you know, but aside from that. Aside from that. It seems like it plays okay. And it's very intense an anime, and you are the daughter of the president who has become the president who must avenge her father's death and save the country of Japan out of patriotism and love for your people and nature. Also, sometimes you get a butt shot of her. Sometimes that happens. We saw it in the intro. This has been Liberation Maker. Now, something kind of different. Weapon supply, almost say. I'm gonna slow down a little bit with the action.
more from level five. Some good computer sounds. Fighting the evil lord? You will end, evil lord. Ha! This is no. You will regret. Peace will come to this world. I am glad. A decade has passed and history repeats. That is why new heroes must now protect the peace. But someone has to make their weapons. Yeah, we're not protecting the peace. We're, we're making the weapons for those who will. So this game is made by Nex Entertainment, came out in February of 2014. Wikipedia describes it as a comedy rhythm JRPG. It seems pretty unique. Let's have a look. Start a new game. The return of the evil lord is nigh. That was the rumor that spread across the land, causing adventurers and would-be heroes to frequent the weapon shops of old once more. However, with every NPC buying a weapon to protect themselves, materials became scarce, and the cost of weapons rose. But one young apprentice knew that adventurers needed to have weapons, no matter the cost. This predicament crossed his mind on a daily basis, until the answer came to him. If we can't sell them weapons anymore, we'll rent them out. He knew what to do. The day of the grand reopening was at hand. <laughs> well, you, I got the shop sign up somehow. I hope we get a huge rush of customers and become famous. I don't get it. This is your plan for putting me back behind a forge. It's a new era, Master. If we ever want to make any money, we have to change with the... Back to the money thing, huh? No, no it's not that. It, I'm just trying to, uh, to find a way for you to create your weapon masterpieces forever. If you say so. A customer. Hello there. Is this the weapon shop with the grand reopening? It doesn't look that different. Well, you're in the right place. My master is one of the best blacksmiths in the world. <sighs> I see. Well, can you lend me a weapon? I want something really overpowered. I've got money, but I never find good weapons in chests. With enough attack, I could kill a big monster and become famous enough to have an actual name. I'm sorry, but it's our store policy not to rent out weapons more powerful than the wielder. Ooh, that's dumb. Why? Part of our service is that we match the right weapon to the capability of the user, you see? Yeah. Ooh, I get it. If that's the case, what level do you see me as? Um, master? You need to appraise the customers yourself. I can't be your crutch forever. In that case, I know I'm not fit to judge, but you're level five. Uh, more like level one. Oh, oh, did you hear my heart break just now? It's broken. Totally shattered. Damn. I'm sorry. I learned from my master, and he's really blunt, so... Nah, uh, it's all good. Huh? I know my ex, and you're right, uh, I am level one. So how about you rent me a short sword that even a level one guy like me could use? No problem. I'll have it ready by the next time you come in, okay? 
I'll be back then. Woo! Yeah! Good. A short sword is the bottom of the basics. You should try it yourself. Uh, what? Me? Yeah, you. Hurry it up. Uh, okay, I'll do my best. It's time to put us in the forge. So, to make a weapon, we touch a hammer icon on the touchscreen. So, there's the hammer. Touch start to create uh, the weapon shown on the forge. We can add materials to create a stronger weapon by touching the material button. Short sword. Um, it's only level one. Critical 5%, durability 70. Material. We don't need any materials. I guess we already have those materials. There it is. Let's press start. Okay, shape the hot metal to look like the sample. So we see the sample shape. The icon. Touch the hot metallic, metallic material with the stylus and try to make the shape of the weapon. Don't tap it like a dimmin. T try to match the rhythm and timing of Oyaji's strikes. Oyaji's rhythm will be displayed to the left of the meter. After you listen to the example, it's our turn. Hit the material with the same rhythm as the markers to the right of the meter. We can't make a weapon by hitting the same area over and over. Try to hit it in different places. We'll be able to identify the shape better if we work our way from the outside in. It's a perfect temperature. You can see the temperature meter on the bottom of the touchscreen. The meter has yellow, red, and blue sections, and the red area in the middle is the sweet spot. You'll make a stronger weapon if you hit it while it's in the red zone. Do your best. The material will gradually cool down while you're making it. But don't worry, you can touch the fire icon on the bottom right to heat it back up. Using the furnace depletes your stock of coal, though, so once that's gone, you can't heat it up. If the material cools down all the way, the forging will fail, and you'll lose your materials, too. Make sure you keep an eye on the temperature as you forge your weapons. So it's not just about getting the rhythm right. We have to monitor these other aspects as well. Missed that first one. The completion percentage shows how far along we are with creating the weapon. Once the weapon starts to take shape, use the flip and turn buttons and the circle pad. So, let's see. Beat the material into, so yeah, beat it into submission. Okay, let's turn and turn. Weapon has taken shape. Time to cool the material down. Okay, touch and hold water until it's cooled down. It's done. Oh, my durability is great. That's a good. That's a good thing for a weapon to have. The weapon is complete. The specs of the weapon depend on your rhythm and temperature management. There are three categories of power. Slash, pierce, and blunt. They're affected by your performance. You also see its special attack probability and the weapon's durability here. You can raise the probability of a special attack by increasing your chains. Durability is affected by the amount of coal you have left. Right, so I didn't need to use any coal, so that's why it's 100%. Try to make good weapons for the customers you need to rent them out to. Let's go back. Hello, is that short sword ready yet? All right, let's uh, rent it out. So 
We only have one to choose. We can check the customer's weapon compatibility. An arrow be will be displayed to indicate which attributes will go up during the quest. But well, of course, we only have one to give. It sure is. This is it. Our store's short sword. Oh, awesome. I'm going to try it out on a monster that's outside my comfort zone. Uh, don't go too crazy. This is it. My quest begins. Wait, I need to explain the terms and conditions before you leave. Fine. The basics is that we're a rental shop. You pay for the item when you return it, but if you fail... Goop? We don't take your money. Whoa, that's pretty generous. We also don't take any money if, or if you lose the weapon or if it breaks during use. Are you serious? How do you plan on staying in business with policies like that? Well, we have doubts too, but we believe in renting weapons that ensure our clients safe return. That's so fair and honorable and pretty butch. Am I using that word correctly in this context? That's how my master rolls! Oh, all of my weapons have a device in them called a grind cast, if you know what I mean. Really? All beyond the grind cast? Yep, that way we can overhear how your adventure is going. That's right, we installed spyware in that weapon. We collect that information so we can make more educated appraisals and rent out the right weapons. How oh, very modern. But if that's all, then I'll be on my way to my quest. Check the grindcast for me. <laughs> Woo, yeah! We can listen to our customers' quest progress in real time using the grindcast communication system. The feed appears on the top screen, but we can touch the grind cast. Such a good name. The grind cast icon to see the whole timeline. All right. So there's the grind cast icon right there. Let's uh, let's listen to it. Okay. The grind cast lets we lets us overhear the actions of our customers and the world at large. The all button shows the current filter. Touch the heart to get more info. Stop the feed from scrolling by touching the lock. Uh, let's see, a customer. Let's listen in on Mr. NPC. Choose a feed. And uh, it would be NPC E. So this weapon has the grindcast embedded in it, huh? It records battle and picks up everything I say to transmit to other listeners. That's crazy. Do you like speed reading? You can hold the L button to make the text scroll faster. This is cool. I like this weapon I borrowed. Well, I'm going to reach level two, no matter how much grinding it takes. Good thing I don't have any private conversations to have right now. Otherwise, otherwise, you know, it might be a little embarrassing. But right now, it's all, I'm all business. I'm almost at Tutorial Cave. Huh? Is that a kobold? Now's my chance to give this weapon a shot. A kobold appeared. NPC versus a cobalt. Fight! Is it cool if I pierce you, please? I'm glad that he was requesting consent. He did the pierce attack for 153 damage. It'll do that. We defeated a cobalt. I won. Maybe it's because I had a good weapon, but whatever. I won. And I gained a level. Now I'm level two. And I class changed from NPC to cool NPC. I guess I'll head back now. I want to tell that shop how cool I am. Quest finished. Well, ma okay, that's all for the grindcast, yes. I made it. Welcome back! I took out that kobold, no problem at all. I was surprised that this sword was so easy to use. 
quest is clear. Thank you very much. You think this weapon rental system may really take off? We hope so. Maybe you'll come again someday. Great, we'll be waiting for you. See you. I'm so glad his quest was a success. Pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of work to do, and you gotta start making difficult weapons, too. Right. I'll do my best. If the customer's quest succeed, they'll return the weapon along with money and possibly materials. Don't forget that we can increase a returned weapon stats by polishing it. To polish the weapon, touch the wrench icon on the touch screen. All right. Okay, we got some iron sand. The experience uh, of the short sword. I, I didn't know that a sword could gain experience. I mean, usually a, a weapon after being used is just going to gain wear. This one's actually exp getting experience points. All right, let's polish it. We can polish a weapon every time it returns from a quest. The weapon will go stronger every time. Try to polish weapons while I read the grind. Okay, so I can do things. Like, while the grind cast is happening, I can do other things. Touch the start screen on the touch screen to begin. All right, start. Let's polish it. Polish both the front and back sides. Left side of the meter on the touch screen how much indicates how much the front is polished. Right side of the meter indicates how much the back is polished. So that's how the weapon will increase when I finish polishing both sides. Rub the weapon with my stylus to polish it up. All right, okay, just like that. Just like that. Slow and with rhythm. Getting its luster back. Keep it up. We're having trouble? Touch the turn icon to view it from a different angle. Yeah, it'll get too uh, calloused and insensitive if you keep working the one spot. You know how that goes. Let's flip it over. Don't go too fast. Don't go too fast. Big dog! Can, no, I can look at it from every direction. Zoom. Oh, yeah, look how close I can zoom in on. The weapon has been beautifully polished. It's back to its full potential. Polish returns weapons. Returned weapons. Polish returned weapons to use them again and polish freshly made weapons for a stat boost. Make sure I polish weapons whenever I have a spare moment. I should always be polishing. I have another guest. Wow, business is picking up. Hello. Welcome to our store. My name's NPC1, and I'm here to play the stereotypical adventurer that are a dime a dozen now. And while I'm at it, maybe I also came from another world and was hit by a truck or something, if we're getting generic with it. Nice to meet you and all that. Are you being forced to do this? Blackmailed, maybe? Not exactly. It's more like I was made for the sole purpose of renting a weapon to fight with. I'm supposed to ask for an axe. Oh, we actually just opened, so we don't have any axes yet. But I could start making one, so you could, like, maybe go kill time in the town or something? Sure, I guess I could see if any the NPCs say anything different. An axe, uh... A Sharova would do the job. Well, that NPC was kind of a weird guy, don't you think? Yeah, they're all like that. Let's make a Sharova. Right. This time we'll be making a Sharova. Touch the hammer icon. Yep. Okay, let's get started. Yep. Big axe, big ol' axe. Let's uh, see if it's any different. How we're doing this. All right.
Okay. In the water. Conceal. Where do we install that spyware, by the way? I don't see us actually putting it in there. Sharp. It's sharp. Try to make good weapons for the customers. You need to rent them out, too. Let's go back. Hello, it's me, NPC1 again. Looks like my axe is ready. How'd you know? I just finished it. Yeah, I, I kind of just know. Maybe I'm a special clair clairvoyant NPC type. Maybe I'm actually a prophet who will save the world. Could be, I guess. Anyway, want to check out the weapon? Alright. Just looking at him. Got like a leather corset kind of thing on. I don't know if that's going to be secure armor, really. Alright, but... The evil... The, the, uh, this is the fated NPC. He's going to go kill the evil lord. He's going to do go do that already. I don't know about this. But all right, if that's what he wants. What do you think? Nice. I'll take this axe and beat the evil lord. See ya. What? NPC 1? Uh, that's only the second weapon I've ever made. I don't know about the evil lord. What? I didn't catch that. I'm going. What the hell kind of conversation is this? I don't get it myself, but I can't feel like that NPC-1 has a special destiny. Maybe... maybe he will be the one to defeat the evil lord. Nah. The customer went on a quest, alright. Let's spy on him with the grindcast. You know, we didn't actually mention to him, to NPC-1, that there is spyware in the axe. So, I mean, we really are spying on him this time. NPC-1. Well, here I am. Off to defeat the- fight the evil lord where no idea where he actually is. This is gonna be a long trip. If you're too- yeah, I know, L button, I know. I actually am holding that down. Well, I'm off to fight the evil lord. I'll just follow the signs. Uh. Hmm. Huh? This intersection doesn't have a sign pointing to the evil lord. Dubious. Which way should I go? I don't know. I can't make these important decisions. Why isn't there a sign? Ugh. Dang it. I don't even know which way the city is now. I guess I'll just walk. Heh. <laughs> trudge, trudge, trudge. It's kind of dark here. Maybe this is where I'll bump into the evil lord. Huh? I think I heard something. Ack, a goblin. A real monster came out. A goblin appeared. NPC versus a goblin. Fight! Whoa. A goblin attacked. Grah! NPC 1 took 923 damage. NPC 1 was defeated. Uh, 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 uh. Ack, don't take that. No, let me keep the weapon. Oh, God, let me keep my under it. Quest finished. Things were, things were getting strange there in the forest. That's how it go out in the forest. <clears throat> uh, see? Fighting the evil lord at this stage is impossible. Are you blind? He was fighting a goblin, not the evil lord. Well, at least he survived, but do you think I'll make it back to the city? Doubt it. That road goes to Starting City, and without his underwear, who's gonna let him in? I guess the weapon we gave him is as good as lost. If only I could have made something better. I mean, if we made it something better, it probably would have been lost as well. 
If the quest succeeds, the weapon will be returned even if it breaks, but it's lost if it fails. Check the quest details before renting our hard-earned weapons so we don't lose them. Uh, oh, welcome. Oh, I don't need your sales pitch, buddy. I'm just returning this. Uh, this is the weapon I rented to NPC One. I saw him in the woods. He said that losing his underwear made him get in touch with his wild side. He said he beat a goblin with his bare hands. So I won't. He, I guess he won't be needing this weapon anymore. Oof, that's some hot action happening in the forest, I guess. Us NPC types usually don't come back if we fail a quest, but this was a special circumstance. That's it for me. Back to pacing aimlessly around town. At least we got the axe back. The XP went up. That does it for the tutorials. Great work. When business closes, an end-of-day report will be generated showing our store's rating and progress. When the store ranks up, we'll get more customers. Let's do our best to get this place bustling. So that's day one. Freshly opened. Sure, why not? We'll save the progress. And that's probably, that's probably a good taste, a good sampler of Weapon Shop de Amase. Um, it's... An interesting game. It's kind of unique. Um, dialogue is is pretty good. I think I think the dialogue is pretty good. It has a, it has a nice charm to it. Uh, don't know how long the game is, um, or like if the gameplay gets any different or any more compli complex than the what we've been doing so far with the with the forging of the weapons. Um, but I'm I'm kind of charmed by it. Uh, we saved our game, so. Level five putting out some interesting interesting titles on the 3DS, like this this one, like Liberation Maiden, like Attack of the Friday Monsters. Some inspiration, I think, happening uh, with level five's output on this platform. But we still do have more games to try. The next one is Ninja Battle Heroes by Tom Create. That's the name of the, that's the name of the developer, I guess. This came out in 2014. This is some side scrolling ninja action. See, it's Tom. You know, uh, Mr. Create is my father. You can just call me Tom. All right. Um, let's play the game from the start. Let's do that. Okay, what's happening here? In the prologue says that the flames of war are running rampant. This tale is about General Yukimura Sanada and his beast brigade, known to be unstoppable wherever they go. One day, Saizo Kirigakuri returns from a mission to find Yukimura and the entire Beast Brigade missing. Yeah, the Beast Brigade, I know. I've, I've seen those Tumblr accounts. Lord Yukimura, where did you go? Somebody, anybody, get these ropes off of me! I'm not into this! This voice, could it be? On guard. Uh, on guard? That's just a, a ninja game. Why are we saying on guard? Anyway, here's a sign. A tutorial sign. Press Y to throw so stars. Throw stars at these guys. Uh, press down on the C stick to steal their soul? That seems intense. Like we're not only killing them, but we are eating their soul. I don't know how I feel about that. We can get combos. 
I can press X to throw my stars in the background like that. So, I mean, it's, it's 2D action, but there's a little bit of 3D, 3D-ness happening. Also, I can double jump. Let's give it a try. There we go. Double jump achieved. Sizo, you're back. I'm glad to see you. Sasuke took our master hostage so none of us could do nothing. I don't believe it either. I saw him with my own two eyes. It was Sasuke. Sasuke would never do that. Unless he... Unless he had to. I'm going to save Lord Yugamura and the others. Kosuke, I need your help. You don't have to ask. We got a new skill. Level is clear. Objectives? Let's see. Clear without a continue. Take no damage. Finish within 25 seconds. All right, so we got like bonus objectives if you want to redo the levels. Mission is complete. Spirit is acquired. Thanks for saving me. I'm Kosuke. Let me go over the menu briefly. Stage select is where you choose a stage to play. The lower screen shows you the missions and the result of that stage. Use the A button to start a stage and the X button for skill settings. Let's try editing those settings. All right, so I can enhance my enhance and equip skills on the screen. Get more skills by saving the others and clearing missions. Remember, you have to equip skills to the lowest screen before they become effective. The number on the top right of the lowest screen is the amount of skills you can equip, and I can only equip one now. The amount of slots available can be increased by completing certain missions and stages. As I gain more skills, I can pick and choose which skills to make the stages easier. If I need more help, Press the home button, look at instruction manual. I'm sorry this intro was so rushed, but you are our only hope. Uh, anyway, we have one ability. It is the heal ability. Uh, let me edit my skills. I need to equip a skill. Okay, there it is. First aid. Kosuke he uh, heals us with first aid. Okay, it is now equipped. Is, you know, we're still in area one, but we're in stage two of area one. Let's see how it is. Saizo, you may already know this, but using a summon will call, call upon a comrade to help you in battle. Tap the orb of the warrior equipped on the lower screen. I'll press the A button with the orb selected to summon him. You should rely on your comrades when you're in a tight spot, but remember, each summon uses up a spirit beat. We will be on standby, ready to help you on the battlefield. Luck be what on your side. All right. Unguard. Okay, there's L, which is block. Big axe. Probably should try blocking the axe. Hmm. 
Mm. Can he be defeated? Seems like he's taken all my hits. Okay, no, no. He just had a lot of health. Continue further on into the forest. Thirty hit combo seems like a lot. What did it say? Did it mention what the skill was? It said we got a skill, but what was it? Oh, that's the back button. So spirit soul spills, speeds up spirit draw. Effect cannot be stacked. Whoops. Keep pressing the, the, the back Okay, I can only have the one thing at a time. At the moment. Maybe we should just keep it on heel. Too tall for a double jump. I might as well try a heal. Oh, 
You saved me! Thanks, Cyboy! Whoop. Pressing that button makes the dialogue skip quite a bit. There are more thi important things to discuss. Do you know where Sasuke and Lord Yokomura are? I think they were headed for the castle over there, but you know, that monkey wasn't quite himself. Really? I thought he was acting perfectly normal. Whoa! I didn't see you there. You couldn't tell a cat from a dog, Kosuke. I can't believe you didn't notice. Mochi, you're always so mean to me. No, I'm not. Kosuke, zip it. So mean. We must hurry. Kosuke, Mochizuki, follow me. It's Mochi for crying out loud. New skill acquired. One three completed, and a new friend acquired. And Mochi is a pyromaniac. She's second to none when it comes to using fire. The forte is a flame attack to the front. Call upon her when there is a group of enemies in one spot. Mochi loves burning people alive. Can't get enough of it, really. Well, I think I can still only hold on to one skill at a time. Yoshi brothers, why do you stand in my way? None shall pass. All who try shall be executed by us. Mm. Have you lost your minds? I guess I have no choice. On guard. This is a boss. Uh, take... Oops, no. Nope. There we go. Alright, uh, take... Oh no, was not in the range of the dynamite. It was just out of dy just barely out of dynamite range.
Okay, it wasn't, wasn't dynamite range that time, and that did quite a bit of damage. Oh, but I got hit with the ground pound. Oh, we just start from there. It's fine. I think I'm facing the wrong way. Oh, no, there we go. That's fine. That's fine. Fell for the old dynamite trick. Fell for the old, I'm going to throw a stick of dynamite at your feet and blow you up. Everyone falls for that. Oh, wh where are we? Seikai, have you come to your senses? Oh, thank you, Saizo. Kosuke, Mochi, good to see you're safe as well. Of course we are, but what happened to you two? My brother was being mind-controlled by Sasuke, and he gagged me so I couldn't speak. A gag? Yikes. Sasuke using mind control? Did he ever have a skill like that? See what I mean? Isn't it strange? <laughs> Brother, now's not the time to laugh. We tried to kill Saizo, but a moment ago. Hi, sir. Don't say that. What's done is done. Saizo, Yukimura should be in the top tower of the castle up ahead. Okay. Let's hurry. New skills, skills acquired. Clear without summoning a beast. Well, we did not clear without summoning a beast. We did indeed summon a beast. Saikai can slam his club into the ground to create an earthquake that damages enemies around him. He can stun enemies on the ground, but has absolutely no effect on enemies that fly. Well, that is Area 1 of Ninja Battle Heroes. It's just like a pretty simple side-scrolling, platforming ninja action game. Uh, but it feels pretty good to play. feels pretty smooth, and uh, it's got some character to it. got some characters, and I do like how the main character is just it's basically Strider. Main character is just Strider. It's not, they didn't even really change the design much. It's just it's kind of him. Not like a big 3DS game or anything. Just like a little thing. Came across it on the eShop, and like everything else we've been looking at, no physical release for Ninja Battle Heroes. So, like everything else, as the 3DS eShop goes away, so too does this game. And there's one more game we're going to look at with this session. Uh, as we have been doing, we're going to be looking at some DSiWare, this time Mighty Flip Champs by Way Forward. So Mighty Flip Champs came out in June of twenty of two thousand nine. Um, looks like this game did get a port to the PS3 and the PSP, but as far as the the DS and the 3DS go, no physical release for this one. The description of the game, basically of the gameplay on Wikipedia, says that players control Alta. A girl has to, who has to reach a fish man by flipping between areas until she can reach him. And yes, that is accurate. We have to reach a fish man. It's essential to reach him. All right, so how does this game go? Well, I've tried a few levels here. Let's start from the beginning and we can see what the levels look like. It's a puzzle game, you see. All right, we got two screens happening. Uh, the top screen is the one that I'm actually on. The bottom one is maybe some sort of reflection. Now, I can't actually jump. The only thing I can do is press a button to cause the screen to flip. So now I can walk under this. If I flip back to the other screen, there's the fish man. Fish man picks me up on his shoulder and we teleport. We did it.
we reached the fish man. On to one, two. What is our goal? What is the story? Who are these characters and what are they doing? I don't know. I don't know if the game will tell us. The fish man is on the other screen right now. He's not on the top screen, but rather the bottom. How do I get over there? Well, this block is in my way. But I flip. Now this fence is here and I can climb this fence. And if I'm looking on the bottom screen to see where the fence is there, it would be right here. How's he, how are you doing? There's someone here, but that's not who I need. I don't need this person. I need the fishman. It's very clear. And I found the fishman. We are happy about it. It's the immortal story, the timeless story of girl who has to flip realities to get to the fish man who is holding the teleporter. The fish man cannot move. Of course he can't. We would never expect the fish man to move. Let's see. I'm stuck in this little bit here. But if I flip, now I'm stuck in this. I flip again, I'm now I'm in, stuck in this. And now we might notice it's not two screens anymore. It is more than two screens. We got red and blue, but now yellow's coming up next. And so they they introduce complexity to the relationship between girl and fishman. Previously, it wasn't that complex. It was only the two screens. Now, now, who knows how complex this relationship could get. There's Fishman. Fishman seems, I don't know, kind of just so like a permanent expression of surprise on his face. All right, there's some spikes on the ground. We don't want to touch those spikes. The spikes will kill us. So let's walk to here, then flip, and here's a fence. Where are we using that fence to get to? Maybe over to here. And maybe up to this platform. But I'm too low. I need to get higher. Maybe I need to stand right here so when I flip... I'll be standing on this block. And now I can climb this fence. And maybe stand above the fishman and flip. That was not that was the wrong move. I fell into the spikes. It's not the right move to make. But of course, we never die. It's just, you know. Painful little detours. But nothing can ever actually stop her from trying to reach her fish man. Really, nothing's actually trying to stop her. It's just a matter of whether she can work out how to get to the fishman. But no, one, no one's actually trying to prevent her from reaching the fishman. All right, then we flip again. And there he is. also a cat there with a jetpack, and the, the cat looks kind of baffled as well. But the cat doesn't seem to be important. Like, we're not- I don't know if we do anything with that cat. Well, we can't fall down there. There are spikes. But no spikes here. I 
we can flip to this, but, well, can't do anything here. Now there are even more screens. There's red, there's blue, there's orange, there's green. Actually, purple. Actually, I don't know if there was a blue. There might not be a blue. Maybe there's a purple. So, I'm standing in some spikes on the purple screen, but if I flip, I should fall down onto the platform that would be below me. There we go, like that. Stand here so I can flip to the red screen and get, get on this platform, and then to the green screen so I can stand here. Let's see, but how would this help me? If I, if I flipped there, I guess I would just... So we just fall down. That's all that would happen there. Oh, I flipped into a block. And that can kill you just as much as spikes can. So this is the same progression that I did previously. All right, so here maybe. Stand on the red platform here. If I flip, I'll fall down onto the green. Okay, so now I'm standing up here. Flip, I would be falling onto the orange, but is there a reason to do that? If I flip now, I'll be standing on that purple. If I drop down to here, I'll be standing on the red. Now I can get on this fence here. I'm gonna get up here, so I flip and I'm gonna fall down on that green. And now I'm standing next to Fishman. Oh, we need, I'm sorry, we need the cat. I'm standing next to Fishman, but we're, he's thinking of cat, saying, hey, I'm, he's shrugging, saying, I'm sorry. I'm, we, I'd like to go, I'd like to teleport, but I can't leave without cat. We need cat. I'm like, okay, well, all right. Maybe we should have established that to begin with. That cat can't get out on his own. You know, I'm not saying let's leave cat or anything. standing next to Cat there, but... Let's see. Can I get back to Cat? If I teleport here, I'll be I'll enter I'll be in a block, which will kill me. I'm very close to cat, but so if I how, how do I get to cat then? I flip that, I'm gonna fall down onto that block. I can't jump or anything, so like if I do that, that's all that's gonna happen. Could drop down. Is there a reason to do that though? Does that help us get close to cat? That takes me back up here. Uh, 
That's not re I don't know if that's actually, it doesn't seem like it's going to help me. Now that's just going to make me fall into the spikes. Cat has a jetpack. Seems like Cat should be able to move on Cat's own. Cat is so close, yet Cat remains so far away. Now we're standing above Cat. All right, Cat has been caught. Frogman is now satisfied. We have satisfied the requirements of Frogman. Actually, Fishman. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah. It kind of looks like he's kind of looks like he could be both. Well, that would be a little look at Mighty Flip Champs. Like many DSiWare games, it's quite small. Again, this was when they were first trying out. Digital, digital titles, digital download only titles. Uh, so many of the products on DSiWare were, you know, small bite-sized little games like this one, like Mighty Flip Champs. Um, it's made by WayForward. It has a very specific WayForward style to it with a nice looking sound. Um, and it's about puzzle solving. It's about figuring out where do you need to go? What's going to come up on the next screen? Well, I mean, you get the idea. It's a pretty simple puzzle idea, and then they just expand on it as they go. Well, that's a pretty good look, I think, at four titles, digital-only titles, on the 3DS. Liberation Maiden, Weapon Shop Deomase, Ninja Battle Heroes, and Mighty Flip Champs. Of course, the idea here is taking a look at these games that are going to be going away. Well, it's going to be a little bit before they go away. Not won't be that long before they stop accepting money to be added to the to your account on the 3DS. Um, but as far as if you actually have the funds, it be a little you know, like around a year before they they close this. Um, but 
There are still more 3DS digital games to explore. And uh, we're going to keep going on with it. Let's been a look at another four. Though there really hasn't, there really isn't that much, I think, to explore when it comes to DSiWare. Not, not all that many left to look at there. And uh, the Virtual Console didn't have really, barely any exclusives as well. Um, we took a look at Rekka at one point, but there's not much in the way of uh, exclusive things that came out on the 3DS Virtual Console. That's been another four games. We'll be continuing on with more 3DS eShop. <laughs>